don't buy a supercharged ski because they use a lot more gas than a normally aspirated ski. Oh, I didn't get a supercharged ski because they use a lot more fuel than a normally aspirated ski. How many times have you heard that? Is it really true? Hey everybody, this is Captain Frank with the Ship's Log and this time we are going to talk about fuel economy. Uh, you hear it all the time. Every time if I'm in a, uh, a jet ski or a wave runner group on Facebook, I talk to people, people ask questions about it. They go, how much more fuel does a supercharged ski use? than a regularly aspirated ski or normally aspirated ski. Or if I buy a supercharged ski, how much more money am I gonna spend on fuel? Am I gonna be able to go as far, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things I've always said was, well, a supercharged ski doesn't really have to use that much more fuel. It really does depend on how you ride it. But it seems like that nobody really wants to believe that. So now I want to talk about that in, in more depth and show you some information out there that might help you make that decision or might help you to understand whether this is really true. And if so, why is it true? So not too long ago, Jet Drift did an article because somebody asked a question, how far can you go on a tank of gas in a jet ski? Well, obviously, that's going to depend on a whole bunch of different things. First of all, it's going to depend on what kind of jet ski you have, how heavy it is, how big is the tank, what are the conditions? Um, is the water smooth? Is the water roughed? Uh, is there a current? Because obviously, if there's a current pushing against you, uh, whatever direction that you want to go, it's going to take more fuel to go upstream, if you will, than it would be to go downstream or to go to an area where there's no current. So there's so many things that can determine exactly how far you can go on a tank of fuel. So this article wasn't really written as a comparison of fuel economies for different jet skis, but it did show us some information that actually can be really useful to us. And by the way, I will put a link down to the article in the, the description below. So if you do want to read the entire article, that you can, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Now, in this particular article, it talked about ranges for several different types of jet skis. You know, you had sea doos on there, you had Kawasaki's on there, you had Yamaha's on there, and so on and so forth. And again, like I said, they weren't talking about uh, normally aspirated versus supercharged, but they did have some interesting numbers. So first of all, if we take a look at this chart, the first one that they had, which actually showed the range for various models of jet skis at wide open throttle. Now, in this particular chart, you can see that there are several different models, but it just so happens they do have a Yamaha FX Cruiser HO that is a normally aspirated ski, and they have a Yamaha FX Cruiser SVHO. And of course, that is a supercharged ski. So now we have the same model of ski. One is not supercharged and one is supercharged. Now, if you look at this at wide open throttle, it says, and again, as you can imagine, by the way, these machines have the same exact size tank. They both have 18.5 gallon tanks. So at wide open throttle, uh, the Yamaha FX Cruiser HO, that's the non-supercharged, will take you about 85 miles. Now, we know that at wide open throttle, that is your least efficient, or most likely it is your least efficient speed. Wide open throttle is not very fuel efficient, no matter what you are riding. So on the HO, you can go about 85 miles. And it tells you that uh, at, at you're also burning 13.6 gallons per hour and you're getting about 4.6 miles per gallon. If you look at the FX Cruiser SVHO, 
wide open throttle, full tank, you're going to get about 61 miles. That's 21 gallons per hour that it's burning, and you're getting 3.3 miles per gallon at wide open throttle. So, now, what is this telling us? Well, that's pretty much what we expect. That's pretty much what you're hearing when everybody talks about, oh yeah, the supercharged skis, they use a lot more fuel than the normally aspirated. This chart clearly reflects, uh, reflects that. You can go over 20 miles more on a tank of fuel when you only have the non-aspirated ski. Cool, no big surprise there. Here's another chart we wanna take a look at, however. What if you're not wide open throttle? What if you're actually trying to get the best efficiency you can? Maybe you're taking a long, uh, a long cruise or something like that. And what if efficiency at this point is more important to you than trying to get there as quickly as you can? So then they took each one of these machines and said, what is going to be your range at best efficiency? Whatever speed gives you the best fuel efficiency for each skate. Now, again, we have our Yamaha FX Cruiser HO. If you're doing your best efficient speed, your most efficient speed, you can get 133 miles on a tank. And that's a huge difference. From 85 miles on a tank to 133 miles on a tank just because you're not sending it, just because you're actually going at a more conservative speed. That actually came out to 2.9 gallons per hour and 7.2 miles per gallon at your best cruise speed. Not bad. Well, let's take a look at the FX Cruiser SVHO. This is a supercharged machine. 135 miles on a tank. 3.4 gallons per hour at best cruise, 7.3 miles per gallon. Wait a minute, that's better than the non-supercharged ski. I thought supercharged skis weren't supposed to get better fuel mileage than non-supercharged ski, but in this case it does. Hmm, interesting. Now that's not what we've been hearing. Now you might look at this and go, wait a minute, hold on Captain Frank. It says, that the supercharged ski is burning 3.4 gallons per hour at best cruise, whereas the non-supercharged FX Cruiser HO is burning 2.9 gallons per hour at best cruise. The supercharged ski is still burning more fuel per hour than the non-supercharged. Sure, that's because the best cruise speed for the supercharged ski is actually faster. The best cruise speed for the supercharged FX Cruiser is about 25 miles an hour. Whereas for the non-supercharged, it's about 20 miles an hour. So yeah, you're burning more fuel per hour, but you're going faster. And all in all, you actually can go further on a tank of fuel. So how is it that a supercharged ski can actually do a little bit better than a non-supercharged ski? Well, keep in mind, when you're supercharging, you're actually compressing the air. You actually have a higher compression ratio in your engine, okay? A higher compression ratio actually leads to increased thermal efficiency, and that's why the engine has the ability to be more efficient. Yeah, supercharged skis can use more fuel than non-supercharged skis. Well, for example, let's take a look at this last chart again. It says FX Cruiser SVHO, 7.3 miles per gallon at best cruise. Now keep in mind, best cruise in optimal conditions. The water is perfectly smooth. There's no current working against you. Um, those types of things. If the water gets rougher, I don't care what you're in. You're in a boat, you're in a jet ski, whatever, you're gonna use more fuel. If there's a current against you, you're gonna use more fuel. But keep in mind, these are things at best conditions. So the FS, uh, the SVHO, 7.3 miles per gallon at best cruise in those perfect conditions. And I've even thought, but well, wait a minute. <laughs> I've done pretty well. I've gotten, you know, six, 6.1, 6.2 miles per gallon on my SVHO. 
but I've never gotten 7.3. And I actually started to question the validity. And then I was like, well, wait, hold up. Perfect conditions. Who do you know that has a jet ski and there's perfect conditions? And we'll just take one component of that perfect conditions. Perfect conditions, perfectly smooth water. Who do you know has a jet ski when they get perfectly smooth water? They're not sending it. They're not wide open throttle. They're like, oh, snap. And they're just burning it up. That's why I've actually never gotten 7.3. Because if I get that perfectly smooth water, I'm going. But the point is, you can actually get better fuel mileage sometimes with a supercharged ski than you do with a normally aspirated ski. Now, does it happen? No. Why? Because we like to go fast. Let's just face it. But if we really wanted to, if we really wanted that extra mileage, we could get it. It all depends on you. So keep in mind, from now on, don't blame your ski. Blame you. If you don't have a supercharged ski, don't use fuel mileage as an excuse for not getting one. Maybe you just don't want to go that fast, and that's fine. You don't have to. But. So let me know what you think. Do you think this is a bunch of BS? Do you not believe the numbers? What kind of mileage do you get with your ski? Let me know. Leave your comments below. Until then, don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. If you haven't liked the video, please do so. I definitely want to hear what you think about this. So please comment. Until next time, this is Captain Frank. Happy riding.